Okay, here's what inspired this video. Ace Attorney is very likely the most successful visual novel of all time. It's so successful that it opened a lot of doors for the Japanese game genre that, prior to its localization in the West, was seen as inaccessible for Western audiences. Ace Attorney was so tight and fun and well written that it opened a lot of doors for a whole genre of games while trailblazing as a courtroom drama. The first Ace Attorney surpassed Capcom's expectations, and the higher-ups liked it so much that two more games were slated. Years later, for the PlayStation Portable, Chunsoft announced a new visual novel courtroom drama starring a group of ultimate students in a death game battle royale style high school. In Danganronpa, you investigate murders, go to court with your list of evidence, listen to testimony, and present evidence to contradict someone who you discern are incorrect or lying. The director and scenario writer of Danganronpa frequently cites a specific game as inspiration for the first Trigger Happy Havoc game. You're probably thinking of it right now, and if you're here, statistically, you've played it and love it. That's right, I'm talking about Ill Bleed. So, that's wild to me. I couldn't find a whole lot of mention from Kodaga about Ace Attorney. It, would seem like that would be the thing to point to and celebrate and want to talk about, and taking into account their own cultural spheres and footprints, these two games are really interesting when they're sitting next to each other. They're remarkably similar games in a lot of ways, and I think certainly the genre Ace Attorney proved was marketable, and the specific subgenre it carved out is wide and interesting enough for more than one IP. The first really immediate difference is tone. Holy shit, these two feel really different. The immediate aesthetic difference between these two is in their tone. Ace Attorney is certainly a comedy in a lot of respects, and generally slants towards optimism at the conclusion of its cases and games. Will Powers gets the job as Pink Princess. Edgeworth, Larry, and Phoenix reunite outside of the courtroom. Maya pledges to train so she'll grow stronger. Mo decides he'll be the new ringmaster, Francisca cries and says she'll come back stronger, and we see the photograph of Mia and Maya putting the urn back together. All of the bad guys get what's coming, and all the good guys band together and overcome some tragedy. This isn't bad writing, uh, it's really clean and satisfying. It feels good when Red White gets punished. It feels good when Edgeworth gets to let go of a burden. Most of the crunchy things Ace Attorney wants to talk about involve being a lawyer. Justice for All specifically has a really interesting message, which I suspect resonates more if you're Japanese and have a negative cultural association of defense attorneys, which basically boils down to, it's not a moral wrong to do your job as an attorney to the best of your ability. It isn't a prosecutor or DA's job to discern the truth and make their own judgment. A prosecutor should pursue a guilty verdict and a DA should pursue a not guilty verdict, and if both lawyers do their job well, the natural pressure from those two contrasting desires will yield the truth. That's a really interesting idea, and it makes Matt Ongard's case great. Danganronpa, in contrast, has sort of a lot to say as a satire, and more pointedly in a genre called black comedy. It's hard to explain what this is exactly, but these little short monologue intermissions, the Monokuma Theater, show it off really well. Danganronpa is very potent satire. Consider that the group of prodigious high school kids grouped together and told to compete for their lives at the expense of their classmates are gathered in a school. And that's a good opportunity to talk about the respective settings of these two properties. Danganronpa. 
The fact that Danganronpa takes place in a school informs a lot of its aesthetic decisions. There's a school store and the trials are framed as classroom trials. The setting is entirely in a high school with lockers, a library, and a gym. Kodaka mentions that he changed the Danganronpa cast from adults to high schoolers since seeing high schoolers fight for their lives and die is more dramatic and evocative. And we also have to consider the literary and satirical argument that having the main cast be high schoolers proposes. The academic and extracurricular pressure we put on children who haven't finished growing and don't get to enjoy learning as a joy but as a competitive and suffocating amount of unpaid work is crystallized really clearly in a game set in a high school which has the most talented children in Japan kill one another for no reward other than the preservation of their own lives. Ace Attorney is set in uh, California, kind of, or Japan. It's grounded in reality. I, I really like the trips to Kurain, to Gord Lake, and to Global Studios. These hand-drawn backgrounds are nice to look at and complement the tone of the story very well. And they really need to be nice to look at. Despite any protesting about the presence of multiple types of gameplay elements, these two series are told as a visual novel and spend their runtime with text boxes over these hand-painted settings. And both of them do stand up remarkably well as visual novels. Kazutaka Kodaka called Danganronpa 3 the ultimate visual novel and said he took a break from games after making it because he couldn't envision doing that style of 2.5D visual novels any better than it was done in 3. I fully agree, and I think Danganronpa V3 is genuinely one of the most impressive looking visual novels I've ever seen, and it kind of blows most Ace Attorney games out of the water in a lot of respects. The Great Ace Attorney was released at a similar time as Danganronpa V3, and in my opinion is the only one that's competitive at visual storytelling. It's important to note that Ace Attorney paved the way for visual novels in the West, and deserves all of its credit. It's really clear that Danganronpa is visually and mechanically inspired by it, and the fact that Danganronpa had the space to iterate and compete is due to the fact that there was a totally new lane paved by Shutakumi and the Capcom team. Ace Attorney is a genuine pioneer in a lot of respects. Its posing, animation, sound design, and writing all complement the visual novel format in really profound ways. Let's compare moments of conversation and courtroom drama in the third installments of the original trilogies, Trials and Tribulations and Danganronpa V3. And the difference here is pretty stark, right? Ace Attorney seems to me to have more polish and shine. The animations are more focused and deliberate and serve the characterization really well. Danganronpa is doing a lot more with its visual design and it, it is intent on doing everything with its visual design. This is an aesthetic choice, it's not a bug. The mini games are the same, there's a clear intent on doing everything and making sure that there's a strong overload of stimulus to contrast the sort of bleak and sometimes stomach churning parts of these murders and executions. We have the music wave in the top left with a little track title scrolling through, our level, the chapter number, stylized text boxes and colored fonts for our characters, a really aggressive and stylized use of these bende dots which complement the 2.5D look and give everything a comic book feel and a similar amount of stimulus in the trials and all of the associated mini-games. 
The use of space in just normal conversation in Danganronpa V3 is completely unmatched and is especially immersive because it has to go big with its use of space. We really often have 15 or 20 characters sharing the spotlight in one scene, and Ace Attorney style of one character and one text box per frame, which fades out into the next character, is really inappropriate for Danganronpa. Danganronpa also makes sure that you see the protagonist front and center, where Nyx are literal POV. Watch this sequence from the beginning of Danganronpa V3. The way we see the main character Kaede react as the camera swings between characters who all get some time in the frame as speaker or just as participant in the conversation standing nearby is wonderful. Danganronpa really goes above and beyond with the way it not just utilizes but really leans into the 2.5D look. The 3D environments with 2D locations utilize the original Doom principle of having 2D drawings which rotate as you move around them. The settings spring to life as you enter a room like a puppet show and the characters bounce and wiggle as you interact with them and spin around and disappear when they leave a room. These little additions are so fantastic in the way that they contribute to this aesthetic. I adore this. And now, this is a good time to talk about the character design, which shines really well in both games. Danganronpa immediately sets itself up to be more interesting with its character design in an area that Ace Attorney sort of doomed itself. One of these games featured a group of eccentric high schoolers who are the best in the world at a specific skill, and the other set of main, important characters are... lawyers. I know that the auxiliary cast is spirit mediums, which is a really important and good decision, and I know that most of the characters we meet are like gay chef, twink thief, gangster orange tiger twin, etc., but as a starting line, a cast of attorneys and detectives and judges is much harder to make engaging than the ultimate gambler, ultimate breeder, and ultimate robot. All credit to both series though, I think they have really fun and engaging characters. Danganronpa probably has better static designs and Ace Attorney has better animation and posing. Talking about the writing of these characters I also find super interesting because it's sort of herded in a specific direction by the format of both of these games. We'll talk about it later, but the main design principle of Ace Attorney is that on the whole, it prefers to tell you who the culprit is, especially in the early cases and near the beginning of the last day of court in other cases. Where Danganronpa really does want its twists to be a surprise almost exactly up until the reveal. This changes how the character writing is done and informs how information is paced out. Ace Attorney doesn't really kill central characters besides a few really rare big moments and as a result it gets to spend dozens of uninterrupted hours growing and cultivating a central cast. I think I understand Nick, Maya, Pearls, Dick, Mia, and Edgeworth better than any character in Danganronpa. Danganronpa, in contrast, gives you really clear and punchy traits for everyone immediately, but saves a lot of the big writing for a character's own crescendo. Typically, we find out a character's motivations or secret right before they die, as a victim or as the culprit, or when someone close to them dies. These make the deaths really meaningful in a way that Ace Attorney doesn't really try to do for its standard murders where someone we don't know very well dies. Both games do write really fun and interesting characters though. Danganronpa seems to lean towards poppy and interesting ones while Ace Attorney has the dial cranked down slightly in favor of a central cast which grows on you over a few games. Kodaka also famously said he only writes characters he likes and can't write for characters who he doesn't think could star in their own games. The scenarios are written first in Danganronpa and filled in with characters who would be interesting moving pieces. Conversely, Ace Attorney has plenty of characters who are designed for a specific case and are somewhat one note or designed to be disliked by the player in the case of the prosecutorial and criminal antagonists. And again, these design differences are owed to the form these two projects take in their approach to mysteries. <laughs> As I mentioned, one of the primary writing differences in these games is their approach to the presentation of the mystery. 
Ace Attorney begins as a series by showing you who the culprit of the first case is. According to Shu Takumi, the idea here was to let you focus on the thrill of catching the culprit, not on the mystery of who done it. We see this decision immediately in the setup of the first case, ignoring even that we saw him do it. If there's only one witness who Mia immediately tells us is lying and we know Larry's innocent, from the perspective of a mystery where we're trying to figure out who did it, the suspect list is one. When freed from the difficult constraint of giving us a sufficiently large suspect list by adding more characters to the story, giving us enough clues to figure it out, and making the culprit surprising, the first case has so much room to breathe and teach us about its system and make the entire build-up to catching Frank Saw it crunchy and satisfying. It felt good to corner him because we didn't have to waste time suspecting the housekeeper and trying to learn about her and the landlord and the mailman. And while I want to compare these two on equal footing, I have to articulate clearly that Danganronpa has a distinct advantage in not having to justify its existence for a Western audience, justifying a game about being in court. By the time Danganronpa came out in the first place, Ace Attorney had existed for three games, wrapping up an entire trilogy, been made into a similar logic battle-based spin-off, and had begun its next trilogy with a new defense attorney and premise in Apollo Justice. Danganronpa 1 can step up to the plate knowing that Ace Attorney sold well in the West and was well received. Ace Attorney created a genre, and Danga Rapa is free to iterate on it, asking, what if Ace Attorney looked like this? Ace Attorney has plenty of interesting things to figure out, but tips its hand to you very often so that the audience can focus on the puzzles, focus on the thrill of catching the culprit. Both games are really wild logic, and it's very easy to go online and find little plot holes or inconsistencies in both. Danga Rapa has a very consistent flair for the dramatic and the unbelievable in its big twists at the end of these games, and in the events of the murders. Ace Attorney, on the other hand, tends to lean more towards grounded and practical in my opinion, but still has room for really eyebrow-raising leaps. My take, though, is that if it's justified well, they don't have to be logically airtight. If, as the player, we can follow the game's flow of information and are interested in the puzzles, it doesn't matter how silly or unbelievable these cases are. The really interesting and crunchy things to think about in these cases are always filled with one in a million freak accidents, and if the murders were more mundane, they wouldn't fill out six hours of courtroom drama and investigation. The same can be said about the spirit channeling robotics and other superpowers both series use. These games have room to wiggle around their mysteries and make engaging and rich murders because of the legwork they do setting everything up. So let's talk about the investigation sequences. The investigation sequences are quite similar with some design philosophy differences. Not knowing where to go during the investigation isn't fun. Danganronpa tells you really explicitly, I'm not done here and here's where I should go. This seems to me like a direct response to the sequences in Ace Attorney which are markedly slower and more freeform. You generally have the whole setting to explore and a story to progress for a good number of hours in Ace Attorney. There's no free time like in Danganronpa so there's a wider area to interact with and more options and more balls in the air. Danganronpa does a better job at confining you to the scene of the crime when a murder happens and tells you very directly where to go to explore and when you're done with the exploration. There aren't very many moments in Danganronpa that you feel stuck or unsure of how to progress in my experience. There's a certain crunchiness that I think is fair to prefer in Ace Attorney which makes you stick around and explore and be a bit stuck sometimes. When I was a kid playing these, that was kind of the whole experience. I got lost, I presented a bunch and examined every single blade of grass and light bulb and it got a little dry, but I did truly enjoy the little quiet moments with Maya and Nick talking and bouncing off of each other. They have good flavor and I don't think a temporal feature like slowing you down and making you do something less fun and explosive than the trials is necessarily a bad thing. Now that I'm a bit older playing Ace Attorney, I do find that for the most part they telegraph when you're done with an area or when you need to present something to someone to progress. 
This isn't a competition, and I don't necessarily prefer one over the other, but their differences do create a mosaic of two different types of stories, even with lots of surface level similarities. Ace Attorney basically does its own version of free time, but it has less characters to let you talk to and doesn't really give you much choice in whether or not you want to talk to them. You spend the investigation bouncing between chatting and exploring and gathering clues, breaking psych locks, and picking up evidence that you'll use for the court section. This is a really important feature of courtroom drama games. You need a lot of time to walk around the scene of the crime and get a good feel of the layout of the physical space, understand the geometry of where things are with respect to each other, and what the witnesses and suspects are like. This is where Danganronpa's 2.5D art style I think is really excellent. It doesn't sacrifice its wonderful 2D drawings of the characters, but still allows for robust 3D exploration of its space. The part of the brain that builds maps and tries to explore things spatially sometimes really gets lost in Ace Attorney where we move between scenes by clicking a list of options which transition to and between each other differently. Sometimes I'll see a map of a setting and be surprised that this room we've seen so much of is connected to this other room geometrically where I had envisioned and built them with respect to each other differently. Danganronpa is set in one contiguous and expanding space, so it's more important that we are allowed to construct the space more robustly. I argue really strongly for the simplest and coolest design a game can do well, and I'm positive. Danganronpa would look so ugly if they gave us ugly 3D models to look at while we explored. I already think it could kind of lean into this 2.5D style a bit better and not make these really blocky and bare 3D spaces because its design philosophy is so fucking cool all the time. Now, let's go to trial. <laughs> I have the impression that these two are kind of similar in their puzzle solving. There are certain leaps you'll have to make in both that are uncomfortable and not super obvious, and there are plenty of moments where as soon as you see the crime scene you kind of put something together that the game will ask you about in 4 hours or something. Danganronpa seems to ask less of you with the possible combinations, giving you only a few statements that you can present evidence to, specifying the exact words you're allowed to object to, taking away your ability to press, and only giving you a few pieces of evidence at a time. This is contrasted by Ace Attorney, which has less total evidence, especially in the early cases, but which doesn't restrict what you can present through the entire proceedings. Pressing is a really interesting mechanic in Ace Attorney. It simultaneously offers more depth to each statement with the consideration that there's a lot more ideas buried under each sentence, but it also feels slightly arbitrary. There are cases where you can just zip right to a statement and present for it, and others where the witness says nothing fishy and you feel like you might as well go down the line and just press everything they say till something crazy pops out. It's normally pretty clear what they expect from you. Should I pursue this line of questioning? Yeah, probably. Should I have them add this new really suspicious account to the record? That sounds pretty good, yeah. Danganronpa also has a ton of these little mini-games added to the proceedings that keep things feeling really fresh and malleable. These are hit or miss, generally. Ace Attorney is perhaps a bit one-note, but I'm also not sure that we needed all of these little diversions. The one perfect exception is the comic at the end of Danganronpa's cases, which has got the best art in the game and summarizes these really often convoluted plans that we haven't gotten as the reader a chance to articulate and conceptualize in full. Both games have their strongest moments and most of the really crunchy, exciting core gameplay loops in these court sections, and both of them are excellent. Ace Attorney wrote a really fantastic formula, and Danganronpa iterated on it and made it Weird, and extra, and really, really fun. Sugimori and Takada, composers from the first Ace Attorney and Danganronpa trilogy respectively, created really masterful, perfect soundtracks. As is the case with most of these differences, Ace Attorney is just so iconic and well-crafted, with Danganronpa being similarly excellent but much weirder. 
the Monokuma, Manomi, and Mono Cub themes are standouts as the best songs in their respective games and the wildest. Here are a few songs from both games to give a clearer impression of the tone differences. <laughs> Attorney songs, in my opinion, are a bit catchier and have a bigger footprint because the games they're attached to are just a bit more iconic. The Anniversary Symphony Orchestra Concerts and Orchestral Album and Jazz Soul Album are really hard to argue with. That being said, Danganronpa is no slouch musically, and I really did feel excited when a ton of those Danganronpa songs would play. I found them genuinely fun. Danganronpa 1 is currently as old as the original Ace Attorney was when it came out. We really like genre and convention. It's nice, as an audience, to know that when a book is in this specific section of the library, it has a lot of similarities to the other books next to it that we already know we like. The best authors of fiction really all authors of fiction are consumers of it. If you're making a video game, sometimes it's really exciting to make something that's in its own new style of game with groundbreaking tech and ideas. You can have a game which is the first and currently only in a new genre you call a strand type game. To be fair though, most JRPGs, fighting games, horror games, mystery games, and beyond are being made with slight iterations to a really well-tested and well-liked formula. I don't think Danganronpa is more similar to Ace Attorney than maybe Street Fighter is to Tekken, and I'm really glad that all those games exist. Frankly, I think there's a vacuum for more puzzle-solving text-based games. So, with that being said, if you've played Ace but not Danganronpa, I recommend it very strongly. I want to celebrate this genre, please give it a try, and if you have any recommendations that are adjacent to Ace Attorney, Danganronpa, or Zero Escape, please leave them in the comments so I can try them out. As always, much love, be safe. Hey, thanks for watching all the way through. Really, really excited about this one. Um, I spent a lot of time learning how to hand draw and animate all the music visualizers and text boxes and chapter markers and stuff, so it took a while. I was planning on dropping it right after the Dual Destinies video, but it did take a month, so planning on making a new one soon, but let me know what you want to see. Uh, if you like this, give it a like, send it to somebody. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.